I'm James and welcome to the Rebel Base and following last episode's nostalgic ride that was the creation of the Millennium Falcon Bench, this time we get back to our Rebel roots and we create a Rebel Trooper Endor helmet in collaboration with Odin Makes. Now I'm sure you're already a subscriber of Odin's amazing channel. He creates all sorts of brilliant content from all of our favorite franchises, including Star Wars. So I was really hyped when we got chatting about potential collaboration that would allow me to help out on the 3D modeling and print aspects of this build. You'll definitely want to check out both of these videos. I'll be concentrating on the design and print aspect of this prop before shipping those pieces over to Odin, where he'll finish off the prop and build the actual helmet. I'll put a link to his video in my description below. Hello James, I was calling because I'm in need of some really good 3D models and I know that's exactly what you can do because I've seen what you do on Rebel Base Builds. Hey Odin, sounds awesome. Is this for uh, May the 4th to be with you? Uh, no, actually May the 5th, or I, I guess May the Sith. Okay, sounds cool. What do you need? Well, it's a request and kind of a promise to my patrons. I told them back when Clone Wars Season 7 started that I would be making three different Star Wars helmets. Well, I've got one left to do, and that's the Endor Rebel Trooper helmet. This is the helmet that Luke and Leia wear during the speeder bike chase in Return of the Jedi. It's been almost two years now. Would you be willing to give me a hand getting this thing taken care of? We like anything Rebel here. Exactly. What I was hoping for was a good 3D model. We could then turn into a 2D pattern or to replicate the whole thing out of foam. Why don't we mix it up a little bit and I'll create some cool greebelified versions of those earphones that you see at the side of the helmet. You know, put the resin printer through its paces and all of that. That sounds perfect, but can I get the parts shipped to me by May the 5th? You mean May the 5th? <laughs> right, exactly. <laughs> so excited. Let's do this. As always guys, the first thing I do whenever I start to build any kind of Star Wars prop is research. Return of the Jedi happens to be one of my favourite movies from the original trilogy, and I always love the Endor scenes. The look of those ponchos, those helmets, the biker scouts, the speeder bikes, and the toys were some of my favourite as a kid. There are four main parts to this helmet. There's the iconic rim that fits around the top of the head, there's the material cover that drapes over the head itself, the visor that goes over the top of the forehead, and of course those awesome earphones. When I pulled this figure out to, you know, look at it in terms of referencing for this model, I remembered all of a sudden why she didn't have the helmet anymore. When I was a kid, I was playing with my figures and I liked to line them all up and put all their weapons with them and the right helmets and things. Okay, stop music. The helmet got sucked up the vacuum cleaner. This is the helmet that I got from eBay. This is my figure that was purchased for me on my sixth birthday. So we're roughly 38 years of wearing no helmet. I'm about to do it. <laughs> it's so beautiful. Right, let's jump straight into the 3D design. I use 3D Max. This is a fairly industry standard software, but it uses concepts and features found in most readily available and free 3D programs. Obviously, 3D models can be very detailed or very basic, depending on the output. However, the sole purpose of this model is to be able to create 2D plans from the actual mesh. And the first thing I do is look at the silhouette of the actual reference image. So I found a reference image online and I made this the background of my editor window. This allowed me to create simple geometric shapes over the silhouette of the helmet. I find that breaking the model down into the elemental parts and matching those with geometric shapes is the best way to go. For example, a sphere for the head, a cylinder for the ring, a half hemisphere for the visor, and of course further cylinders flipped on their side for the cups on the ears. And honestly, there's really only a few techniques you need to use over and over, but in different ways. Functions such as inset allow you to create extra topology within one face, almost like adding a frame to a window. 
A tool that often follows the use of inset is extrusion, and this allows you to extrude the pieces inwards or outwards at different heights and depths. And over time, just using these simple few features, you can obtain pretty much any shape you want. The 3D modeling experts amongst you will all know that there are a number of different ways to create a 3D model. There's lots of different ways to get to the end game, and I like that about 3D creation. I teach it as my day job, and it's interesting to see my learners all take a different route to the final product. And I encourage them to do that, because that's what makes us special. So guys, I think the key to 3D modeling is to just have a go. You might look at a program and think, wow, what do all those things do? Let me tell you something, I don't know what they all do. But what you will do is you will learn to use certain features over and over and in different combinations to achieve the results that you're after. So when it came to the Pepecura model, I stopped here. We didn't need to add any more detail at this point because this was enough to transfer over to the 2D files. However, Odin did ask for a cool 3D model reference. So I continued to add a bit more detail and finally uploaded a version of this model that Odin was able to use as a reference. All that was left was to 3D print those highly detailed ears. What I was really looking forward to was to get to the detail in the center of those headphones. I kind of created these as a kit so that Odin could just take the detailed disc and drop it into the center of the earpiece and then glue it all onto the final product. It was here that I just dropped all sorts of different greebly cylinders and wires and all sorts of different things and I really wanted to push my printer to the limit by adding some really really tiny detail. You can see here just how small a detail this is, and it printed amazingly well. So the day had come, I'd stuck these in a box and I got them sent over to Odin. He's been sending me teaser pictures throughout the week on the progress of this helmet, and I can't wait like you to see the finished product. Odin. Oh, hey Odin. How's it going, mate? Hello, James. It's all done. I wanted you to be able to see how it turned out. Oh, awesome. I, ca I can't wait to see. Whoa. Check that out. Amazing work, man. And that is how Odin makes something from a galaxy far, far away.